Hello guys, uh, in today's video we're going to uh, talk about you know the last bits that uh, are required in order to invert the full body. These bits are the head and the spine. Now I left this video at the very end because uh, these are not the simplest to, to, to invert and um, the problem problem really these two these two modules are based off the same setup if you remember which is a, a you know it's both a hybrid between fk and ik the the real problem comes with the ik spline the ik spline um, inverting an ik spline is quite complicated and let's see let's see what the problem is so i open a very old IK spline. This is, you know, one of the example I I did when when I was ex explaining the uh, IK spline module. So remember, what we're trying to do here is basically having an input joint chain animation, and then having the controls um, moving from that animation. Once that's done, then we can switch back to forward salt and those controls then will eventually move the, the bones in the same way. So this is the concept behind backward solving. Now with, with everything so far we've been lucky because pretty much there was a control that represents the translation and rotation of the bone one-to-one, -one, the legs, the eyes, the, the fingers, you know, the arms. But when it comes to uh, very indirect solvers such as such as the spline, um, there is a there is um, indirect manipulation of the bones through controls that happens with with a spline in between. But let's see what I mean by that. So this is a, a spline IK. And when I move this control up and this control down, you can see that the the joint chain it's performing some motion and translation. And this is because the joint chain, if you remember, rides along a curve. And the, the control vertices of this curve, 1, 2, 3, 4, are basically driven by these controls. And, and the curve, by moving the curve, we're moving the joint chain. Now, in order to properly, you can see already that when I move the control or rotate, I'm going to move it for now. When I move this control up, the position of this joint chain, there is no point along the bones that represent this transformation. So it could be that this control can be in different position and still represent the same, the same joint chain. Not only that, but this joint chain, because it's driven by a curve, the other control, by simply moving it, this joint position has changed so you would expect that this control would follow along. So, so this kind of relationship makes hard to properly compute the position of this control in backward solving. So once we are in forward solving, they represent the same joint chain. It's not impossible, it's just really hard. So let's talk about the solutions. Solutions. So the first, the first solution is what I called easy but inaccurate. It's very easy to implement, but what you get is not 100% the representation of what the joint chain animation does. And again, we're trying to achieve that. So if you remember, correct, if you remember, our setup had FK, FK controls, driving, IK controls. It's bigger, then there is a big thing. These these four controls are then driving through an IK spline the curve, and the curve is riding the joints. It's driving the joints. Okay. There is another one I'm missing here. Okay. So now I draw them separately, but these things, of course, are on top of one another. The easiest way would be to simply assign the animation of this joint to each of the FK control. But the problem is that if the spine deforms too much, these rotation, once copied over, 
to these rotations. They will work, but once I'm back in forward sol, so now it's the control that is driving the bones, these rotation does not won't, won't represent anymore the motion, the actual motion and geometry deformation that these joints had in the original animation. And again, this is the same problem. It's because these points are basically moving points that are moving points on an IK spline. So you, you encounter the same exact behavior, the same exact problem I was just describing with the simple example, the one with the cubes just now. So this, it's easy. So you can get something out of it, but it's inaccurate. Let me get rid of this. The second solution is what I call cheeky, but accurate. And I say cheeky because, well, it's not the ideal. I call it cheeky because yeah, it's, it's not the, the perfect representation of what we're going to do, but it's accurate. It's 100% accurate, meaning that you will get your animation back, baked down on controls, and those controls will perform well in, in forward solve. The third solution is ideal, but very hard. I don't like that. It's ideal, but very hard. So, in this video, we're not gonna talk. In this video, we're gonna basically in one go we're gonna solve spine and head because they're implemented in the same exact way. I'm just gonna show the spine, but the head is exactly the same. We're not gonna use this. I don't. I'm not happy enough with the results. It's very easy to do, but the, it, there is no accuracy uh, behind it. We're gonna. In, we're gonna. Sh I'm gonna show the cheeky and accurate. And this, in the end, is what I'm going to use for this character. I'm going to talk a little bit about this one. But basically, um, I think wh when I did implement this, the graph became so complicated that it, to me, it's um, it became more of a burden. And it, I, I was losing FPS at performances when I implemented this. So I do believe that, you know, potentially Unreal Engine 5 being in... You know, I'm using the the alpha state. So I think there is a chance here where potentially we might get the inversion of an IK spline uh, or some kind of network or mechanism that allow us to do this more easily. So we're going to talk about this, but I'm not going to implement this because I tried it and it's, I mean, at least the solutions I found were extremely so complicated that it was not worth it. Okay, so... Let's go into Unreal and let's see at the let's look at the kind of final result. So in this scene, just to describe a little bit what's going on, I have um, two skeletal mesh. Currently, there is no control rig involved. These two skeletal mesh are identical, and they also have the same exact animation. And this animation is made by two clips. It's exactly the same two clips I was using in the previous video. They're blending. So the purple one is just arms and legs and the green one is just the body and they're blending okay so i'm using the second skeletal mesh with no control rig with the same animation applied to simply i have hidden the, the geometry and i'm showing the skeleton so i'm using the second mesh is just there to display the skeleton and so i can properly see that the animation that we're going to bake onto control rig matches the skeleton okay that's that's the only reason i'm using it so let's let's have a look and do the usual. So these two animations have been, and I need to make these active. They were disabled before. Um, so I'm gonna right click on it and say bake to control rig. Same as usual. Now suddenly this character is in control rig, is on top of the purple skeleton, which is good for now. I expect that when it move, up to roughly this point here, they should follow the, skele the pur purple skeleton. And when I'm moving and blending into the green skeleton, you can see that the green skeleton represents, uh, remember, is the walk cycle I transfer for the mannequin. But you can see that the control rig now follows at 100%, 100 the, the new skeleton. So this is 
I consider this a success, meaning that we, um, even with a complex module system, we're now able to invert motion capture into data and not only that, but blend between clips and everything will still follow. Okay, so you can see that, and, and this rig now, of course, it does work, meaning that you can offset from there. You can see all the keys have been baked. So how is this done? And remember, we're talking about this one. How is this implemented? Well, if I open control rig, um, you can see that this I haven't touched at all. On, in this one, in the backward solve, I in included the module spine and the module head. And the changes I've made are not related to the spline IK solver. Remember, we have, have a solver that is pure, purely spline IK. I haven't done those there. This is where I tested it to perform the inversion, but the graph was so huge and I thought like, and I was losing FPS, so I thought like, I don't, I don't think this is good enough for now to justify the backward solving on the spine. So what I've done instead is I did a simple manipulation of the module spine and the same exact thing, I did it on the module head. At the very bottom here, sorry, at the very bottom here, I haven't touched the graph, but I added an option. So at the very bottom of the spine and the head, you can see this extra option called pure FK, pure FK. And if I open the graph, and here I added, of course, backwards and backwards. So this is the spine, this is in the head. In the forward solve, I'm in pure FK mode by default. And in the backward solving, everything is disabled and it's only enabled back. So if I open the module spine, this, this thing is exactly the same. This is exactly the same. I added the backward salt and the pure FK. And the way I'm going through pure FK is just by branching. It's nothing different. There is just a, a simple branch that basically by default disables completely the spline IK. So right now, what's happening really, it's a pure FK setup where only the FK controls are manipulating the joints on the chain, only them. And the reason is this one. I don't want to have an indirect positioning of an orientation based on multiple controls, but I rather want one transform that represent precisely <clears throat> the transformation that is happening on the bone. So <clears throat> in order for the spline, and, and the same is on the head, it's the same exact thing, pure FK. So what's going on in the pure FK, I'm simply taking all the controls, all the joints, and I'm saying attach the bones to the controls, right? And in the, in the backward solve is exactly the opposite of where we're used to. Take all the bones, take all the controls, and attach the controls to the bones. This is basically the opposite of one another. Okay, so and the same goes for the head. There's pure FK and backward solve. Um, the additional, the only additional thing, and there is a, a little bit of a difference, is that I also included instead of having just these two nodes, there is the pelvis to take into consideration. So the pelvis FK. But overall, the idea is always that. I have controls driving bones here and bone driving controls. I'm using a project new parent because I want to make sure that they they follow they behave as a parent constraint. In this case, because the, the controls are oriented exactly like the bones, I could have used the get get transform, set transform, but I left it as a project new parent in, in case I, I come up with an idea to make the IK spline work, but I didn't. So well the IK spline does work. But again, it's so complicated. It, and so it makes it become extremely slow. So what happens now is that by default, the spline is pure FK. I will have to put this control up here. It's just another way to control the spine. So in this case, the, um, the uh, orange control will be disabled temporarily. And this allows me to perform a proper backward solve. So what you get here is basically this and i believe this being incidentally uh, i i after i i did this 
I went back and checked the examples of the controls rig out there, uh, including metahumans. And it basically the metahumans find it's pure FK. I didn't realize that. And I think I think it's probably for a similar reason. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just you know just guessing here. But it probably for a similar reason for to perform uh, um, backward solving on a spine without using IK spline. So here, what, what, what we achieved here in this series of videos is basically, um, it's basically this. <clears throat> we have a, a procedural control spaces placement. And this is through the setup event. Then we have the actual rig, the actual rig. And this is in, it's it's performed by forward solve. So up to here the rig works. We saw it, we saw that. Rig does work and you can animate. But then we implemented um, backward solving across all the module. And this allows us to uh, take mockup, DCC, anim DCC animation, blended clips, procedural animation, and take each one of these and through the, the backward solving bake it down into rather than being in joint space we bake it down through backward solving onto control space and once we have that we can run again forward solve to have the motion on controls to bones so i consider this a very first, you know, again, another another little milestone where we, we have skeleton that can ingest mocap and can be keyframed. And it has some some modularity. So what's next is um, we need to talk we need to start talking about move targets. shapes for the Maya user um, and then we need to talk about you know dynamic solver so see you soon bye bye